We've arrived at the new Camp Stadium. We are 15 games into our first season in La Liga and this is the game that the whole series has been leading up to. In the 1910s and the 1920s, Europa v Barcelona was one of the biggest games in Spain. These two were fierce rivalries back when Spanish football was still organised on a regional basis. These two were tussling it out at the top of the Catalan table and tonight we're going to reignite that rivalry as we take on a big team from the city, but we've got a dilemma. Do we play Lander in this game? He's been with us since the fourth division, into the third, into the segunda, and we've still got him on our books. Now that we're in the top flight, do we let sentiment reign and play him? Do we bring him on as a sub just so we can wave to the fans? Or well, has his form in recent matches means that he's firmly one of our first 11? <laughs> But before we get into the debate about whether to start Lander or not, it's Patreon update time again and we're welcoming another new supporter to the channel. And this time it's an old friend in the form of FM Trek. You will have undoubtedly heard of Trek. He's one of the most successful FM YouTubers in the entire community, but he's a streamer as well. We will put links to all of his various channels down in the video description below. If you've not been following his FM22 adventures, trust me, you will love a YouTube series that he's got going where he's created his own club in York and set himself the restriction of only playing players that are born in Yorkshire. You can help me say thank you to Trek by going over to his channel and giving him some support. I have got the forlorn task of trying to thank him by getting a win at the new Camp with our Europa side. So is our longest serving player going to be starting for us in the new Camp? I'm afraid the answer is a resounding yes and it's not even for sentimental reasons lander is back kids a player who played a year and a half for us in the fourth division helped us blitz our way through the third division was an absolute stallion for us for two seasons in the segunda he's now back in the starting 11 in the primera division and it's not sentiment he's earning his spot kids i can assure you just three starts that he's made in the last three games he's got three assists and two goals he is back. We are playing a slightly revised formation, not to accommodate him, but we kind of tweaked and changed our formation since you last saw us, and we've stumbled upon this, and it seems to work. It doesn't quite give me the two strikers that I'm looking for, but our old mate FM Trek was waxing lyrical in the comment section after the last video about how I've got to try a shadow striker. I said that I just could not get a shadow striker to work. Well, I think I might have, you know, in the shape of young Marcos Cordoba because he's now on three assists and he's got himself a goal. and He's been playing well in the last three or four games. It means that not only have I not got the two strikers I was looking for, I'm not playing the wide players that I was so attached to either, but we are looking pretty good. We'll show you the form in a minute, but we're now playing a 4-4-1-1 but all four of the midfielders are central. It gets some of our strongest players in the side. We can play Diego Rosa Spearings and Milanese all in the side together to compensate for the lack of width. Well, we're going to play our fullbacks as wingbacks. And we've got Mazalas out on the flanks of the midfield three, providing some extra wide support as well. Whether we'll play them both on an attack duty or a game in the new Camp against Barcelona, I'm not so sure. Let's show you the form because it's not looking half bad. So bearing in mind we were 1,000 to 1 shots to win La Liga, we were predicted to finish dead bottom of this table and there's no denying we were crushingly disappointing in our last game against Almeria. Well since then we've had a little bit of a resurgence. We backed up the Almeria defeat by two wins on the bounce. They weren't against clubs that are the highest places in the division but we're not expected to be the highest places either. So any win is a good win at this level. We beat Alabes 2-1. It was a little bit of a lucky win. Two goals by Corey and Darba, both of them from set plays, managed to get us the win. But in the next game, we were stronger, I reckon. A 2-1 win against Granada. It was a late winner from Rossi, but we were pretty good in this game. We were good value for the lead. We lost the next one. We didn't play that well, to be honest. Lander came off the bench got a goal back for us that gave us a sniff of an equaliser that we were never able to go on and get. But it just got us thinking about whether Lander 
might just have a role in the side. So we tweaked the formation, we changed it. And in our next game, we drew 3-3 with Sevilla. We had to get a late, late, late equaliser just to grab a point. But we were ahead at one stage and it was only a couple of late goals from Sevilla themselves that put them into the lead. When we were 3-2 down, having conceded in the 90th and the 92nd minute, I was a little bit frustrated, but we went back up the other end. Our old mate Alessandro Rossi, who is back in form, by the way, managed to get us an equaliser. And against Sevilla, who are a big spending team, that was a good result. We then drew 1-1 with Malaga. Who gets the equaliser for us? That's right, that on-rushing Mazala, Landa. And then in the next game, I think this could be our result of the season. We went to Sociedad. We put four past them and we beat them 4-2. One of their goals was pretty late on in the game. It was looking even more comfortable than a 4-2 victory at one stage. Look at Lander's performance, by the way. He has got himself an assist for Rossi in the third minute and another assist for Rossi deep in injury time. The guy has looked like a player reborn. So now we're looking at Lander having two goals and three assists in the last five games. The only game of note where we've not really played very well recently was in the last game against Real Madrid. Actually, to say that we didn't play very well might be a little bit harsh on the boys. We didn't have a good second half, but we were only 1-0 down at the break. And in the first half, having gone 1-0 down to a Robert Lewandowski goal, Rossi went clean through after a pass from Lander and hit the post with a one-on-one -on -one chance. That could have tied the game up and sent us into the break at 1-1. As it was, Real Madrid came out and they asserted their dominance in the second half. They scored three more goals, but one of them was a penalty. Another was from a corner. They didn't create chance after chance against us. A lot of the efforts they did have were long shots and their XG is plumped up by the fact that they had this Marcus Asensio penalty that they scored. It does give us a little bit of a sense of trepidation about taking on Barcelona just three days later, but Barcelona are not as high up in the league as you might expect. So whereas the team we've just played in Real Madrid are top by two points, Barcelona have just had to scrape a win to lift themselves from fourth up to third, and they're tied on points with Valencia. In fact, before the Real Madrid game, which we lost, we were in sixth place in the table and Barcelona were in fourth. We've tumbled down the table a little bit after that defeat. Today's defeat could send us further into mid-table. But I think we're doing pretty well to be as high as we are. And I do have some good confidence in the way that the players are playing. We've got some winnable games on the horizon as well. We've got to get Barcelona out of the way. And Villarreal in second is going to be another tough game for us. But we've got games coming up against Osasuna, who were 19th, Levante, who were 16th. We've got Sporting Gijon after that, and they are bottom. So I think we could pick up some more points before we see you again. I think today is going to be a tough one. We're going to have to get out there and see whether we can try and keep the score line down, I feel. But for me, today is not really about the result. It's about the sense of occasion and the history. Almost 100 years ago, Europa and Barcelona were tussling it out in the first few seasons of La Liga. Since then, they've gone in completely different directions. Today, we reignite this old rivalry. And for our fans, this is going to be a game like no other. So how on earth did we come up with this new tactical system? Well, partly it was forced upon us. The wingers that I'd grown so attached to, well, two of our main ones got injured at the same time. Paco Gill was out for a month. Jordi Mbula has been out for a month as well. It left us without our two best wide players. We still had Cordoba, but he's a bit more versatile. So we started playing him as part of a two-man striker. And then we moved him back to start playing just behind Rossi as a shadow striker. And the formation kind of evolved from there. We're into the highlights pretty early on. Barcelona have got a packed stadium for this one. And they are attacking us on the edge of our box pretty early. I don't want to concede this early on. And they've blasted one over, thankfully, to leave us still level in the game. This is going to be one almighty challenge for us. We looked all right in the first half against Real Madrid, and then they blitzed us in the second half. However, it looks like Barcelona have come out like they mean business from the opening whistle. 
and we're going to have a very long afternoon on our hands today. We've had some pretty duff performances recently from some of our defenders. Still, we can't get a performance from a left back. The last five left backs that we've had have all followed a similar kind of pattern. They play well for a game, maybe two if you're lucky, and then they throw in not just some poor performances, but ones that are around a six, maybe even a five point performance. I don't know whether it's because of the tactic that we're playing. I don't see that it should be because we've got a similar system on the right to what we're playing on the left. But I cannot buy a performance from a left back right now. And so it's proven in the last game where Ishmael got himself dismissed. Sadio Mane puts Barcelona ahead. Let's gloss over that like it didn't happen. Ishmael got himself dismissed and was having a poor game before that. So today we've brought in Escobar. He doesn't play very much better when we give him a chance in the side either. We've tried to commit a foul there. It's led to an assist. And Sadio Mane has put them into the lead. Look at the quality of player that we are up against now. Lewandowski opened the scoring for Real Madrid in our last game. Sadio Mane opens the scoring for Barcelona in today's game. And we've got players like Rossi, who've been with us for a couple of years now. We're not quite at the same caliber of recruitment that our rivals seem to be, but we're all about heart, determination and desire. And hopefully we're not going to give up. By the way, as testament to the kind of challenge that we are up against in the last game, we brought on Kevin Carlos as a substitute. As Corian Darba hits the bar, by the way. As we brought on KC as a substitute, Real Madrid brought on Roberto Firmino as a substitute. It just shows the golfing class between us and the big boys. But I think we're closing it gradually. And since going behind, we've had a little bit of possession. Corian Darba's hit the bar. And we were in possession again, but we've given it away. We do have numbers in midfield when we are looking to try and close out these counter-attacks. Maybe we're a little bit short in the wide areas. That's a little quirk of the system that we've created. But Escobar has won the ball, given it away again, and the cross has come in. Sadio Mane is playing school ground football against Corey and Darba and has just rolled him and tucked it into an empty net. But I'm blaming the left back here. Look, we've won the ball. Clear the ball. Instead, you've let it bounce off your own knee and you've given it straight back to their fullback. And that is as easy a chance as you could wish for. We're actually going to pause. I didn't expect to win this game, but this is not good enough. So a shout is going to go out and our shout is going to be that we are going to demand more of the entire team. That is a poor start, gifting the opposition goals rather than making them work for them. Where are we? We're on the half an hour mark. It's highlight time again. You guessed it. It's not for us. And they've slung another cross in. They've had a good header. Corey and Darba is all over the shop at the moment. He's on a 6.4, being beaten in the air. And we're not even on 40 minutes yet. And it's highlights again. Spearings, another player who's not been playing well, to be honest. But we're in Rossi. Not the best at the old one-on-ones. You can see he is not quick enough to run away from defenders. And he passes the ball back to Ter Stegen. But in this system, that is the kind of chance that we've been creating. Releasing the lone front man and him going through one-on-one. -on -one. Rossi isn't always the quickest. But Jordi Mbula can play as a striker and he has pace and acceleration of 15. And he's just coming back from injury. He might be another option for us. If off the bench, if nothing else. We've denied Barcelona. Barossi's still playing well in goal, by the way. On the verge of almost forgiving him. Although I have managed to find some good goalies whose contracts are up at the end of the season. That I am interested in. So we'll keep you posted on that. Cordoba, he's looked good in that shadow striker spot. He's got the ball to Milanese, who's now playing as a Mazzala for us. And now we've got the ball to Rosanna. Spearings, Diego Rosa. We need to try and do something more constructive with it. It's Cordoba. Can we get a little ball through? It's a long range effort. I would have liked to have seen him square the ball. But at least we created a little something towards the end of that first half. We're going to have to tell the boys we need more from them. We might need to up the mentalities of a couple of our players a little bit. If we could get the next goal, we 
never know, we could at least make it exciting. So we'll put that team talk in the forthright category, shall we? I think I was a bit harsh, but the word pathetic was offered to me. And I took it and we've made a substitution as well. We've taken off Coriandava, who was on a 6.3. We've bought on Koulibaly. Koulibaly's not been playing well over recent games either. We've got to the hour mark and at least we've not conceded any more goals. But come into the tactics with me. Have a look at our left back on a 6.1. We don't have another left back because he's suspended. Forgive me, he's now down to a 6.0. How do we try and legislate for these, these poor performances that our fullbacks are playing? We're going to make a change. We're going to bring on Simeu, who can't play as a left back really, but can't be any worse than Escobar. What a poor performance that is. We're going to go in and make sure that we confirm that sub. We're going to have to make another one sooner or later as well. Rasanis is looking like he could do with a rest. Milanese and Rossi are both playing pretty poorly in midfield. We've got a 6.3 from Cordoba, and I can't see any other 6.3s out there. Lander's playing well on a 8.3. He's the only player that's covering himself in any kind of glory today. We need to try and get a goal back. I want to give the fans something to shout about. I'm all right losing this game, but I don't want to go out with a whimper. We've managed to get the ball on the edge of our box. Milanese closes it down. Let's put out another shout. Let's try encouraging them even though they're down. That could be the wrong thing to do. We're going to give it a shot. We're not 2-0 down. We're 3-0 down. Matthias Vargas has scored. Do I open us up now just to try and chase a goal? To give fans who don't really exist something to shout about. Yes, I am going to do that indeed. Let's pause it. Let's skip this. Let's get into our tactic. This is rubbish. Let's go with two up top. And let's try and throw Cordoba further forward. He's going to be an advanced forward. Let's, let's go to a back three and let's push these wing backs on. And let's make one more change. We're going to take off. I think we're going to take off Rasanas. We're going to bring Mbula on. And we're going to ask Mbula actually to push this far forward and just be a wide midfielder on support. We're not going to ask you to be a Mazala. We're going to throw you as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And let's see if we can just tempt fate by nudging our lines up and closing them down a little bit more. This could end as five or six. This whole series is about reigniting this rivalry with Barcelona. And we've not done enough in this game. We've now had a little chance. Thought maybe we'd won a penalty. It was just a free kick that bumbled its way through to Ter Stegen. We're going to go from balance to positive. We're going to shout out Demar Moore. I'd like a chance. We've had six shots, two on target. It's not enough for me. We've not been disgraced. We've not really been competitive either. And we've got one more highlight as we head towards 90 minutes. Is one for them. Sadio Mane, a thorn in our side all afternoon. It's led to a cross. It's Cucciarella. Morosi saved us again, I tell you. He seems to be adapting to life in La Liga. He's a better top flight player than he was a Segunda Division player. And we've managed to get the corner away. We could have won the ball if we'd have just sprinted after it. Instead, we've given it back to Barcelona and we have got two minutes of stoppage time to play. And I think my hope of snagging a goal against them is going to have been in vain. In fact, Mane may well have completed his hat-trick. The ref's running in to have a look at it. I don't think they've ruled it out. Have they? They have. They have indeed ruled it out. We're kicking off. Maybe we've got one more highlight, you know. Umbula sent a ball forward. Going to win it again in midfield. Let's see if we can break. Here is Rossi. Here is Cordoba. One more ball. One more ball. Give it through. Oh, it's a poor one. Now we're having to defend again. We got it though. Spearings. Lander. Cultured. Just didn't get the right run from Cordoba, even though the ball was played to perfection. Lander has been at his majestic best this afternoon. The comment section may well tell you that it's a mistake to bring him back. The comment section may well tell you he should have been released 
when his contract was up at the end of last season. Not a bit of it. He's like a Rolls Royce in that midfield. He's a man reborn as a Mazzala. He's all about creating and scoring goals. He's the difference maker. By the way, he was in La Liga's team of the week last week. I kid you not. Not played too well today or against Real Madrid. But he's still a part of my plans. And if the comment section don't like it, well, they will let me know. We've had some more poor performances today. Diego Rosa's played badly. We've already taken off the left back that was bad. Corian Darba was bad. Cordoba, I gave him the big build-up as a shadow striker. He's not been great either, so I'm afraid we've brought you back for two episodes in a row where we've not scored and we've lost games. But we're playing well in some of these fixtures, I can assure you. Hopefully, the game we come back for will be able to put on a better performance for you. We are now down to 12th. We're on 21 points. We're seven points clear of the drop zone. But we're not a million miles away from forcing ourselves further up the table. We're going to go and play a few more games. When we come back, we'll see whether Europa are still in contention for those top places in the division or whether the second half of the season might just be a relegation battle in Bedborough Steel.